Hello, my name is Ástrún Helga and I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Iceland and part of the ISAVM M team. And today I will be telling you about our research of hypocalcemia in individuals with monoclonal comopathy of undetermined significance. And these are results from the national uh, population-based ISAVM screening study. Multiple myeloma is a malignancy of bone marrow plasma cells characterized by monoclonal immunoglobulins in the blood or urine and associated organ dysfunction, which is encapsulated in the CRAB criteria. A multiple myeloma is always preceded by monoclonal gammopathy of undetermined significance, or AMCUS, an asymptomatic pre-malignant stage. AMCUS is relatively common in the general population and does not warrant treatment, although a regular follow-up to detect progression to multiple myeloma is advised. And this includes regular measurements of serum calcium to capture multiple myeloma-associated hypercalcemia, since it may indicate progression to active disease. However, hypercalcemia is also relatively common in the general population and is most commonly caused by hyperparathyroidism or non-multiple myeloma malignancy. From there arises the clinical problem of how physicians should react to hypocalcemia in individuals with MGUS, and we are unaware of any systemic study designed to address this matter. The aim of the study was therefore to examine the underlying causes of hypocalcemia in individuals with MGUS and which diagnostic factors along with hypocalcemia are indicative of multiple myeloma. And with this, we hope to guide the approach to hypocalcemia in individuals with MGUS in the clinic. The ongoing ISLAB MM study is a population-based screening study for MCUS and a randomized trial of follow-up strategies. In total, over 75,000 Icelanders aged 40 years and above have been screened for MCUS, and two-thirds of those who screened positive for MCUS were randomized to active follow-up at the study's clinical research center. The cohort for this study consists of participants who were in active follow-up in ISLAB MM study and had hypercalcemia. When we had assembled the, the cohort, the medical records of the participants were reviewed in collaboration with a senior endocrinologist to establish the persistence of the hypercalcemia and the underlying diagnosis. And if multiple myeloma was found as the cause of the hypercalcemia, then all the CRAP features present at diagnosis were also recorded. Of the 2,546 individuals with MCUS in active follow-up, 191 had at least one elevated serum calcium level measurement, of whom 93 had persistent hypercalcemia. Thus, more than half had transient hypercalcemia. Of those with persistent hypercalcemia, multiple myeloma was found as the underlying cause in only three participants. In 18 cases, the cause of hypercalcemia was not identified. However, multiple myeloma was ruled out in every case according to ISLAPMM protocols. Primary hyperparathyroidism was found to be the most common cause of persistent hypercalcemia, with malignancies other than multiple myeloma following as the second most common cause. Each of the three individuals who were found to have persistent hypercalcemia caused by multiple myeloma had all the craft features also present at diagnosis, all had bone lesions, for example. So, in this nationwide screening study, based on over 75,000 individuals, we examined hypercalcemia in more than 2,500 individuals with MCUS and found that it was rarely associated with multiple myeloma. More than half had, of hypercalcemia cases were transient, and when persistent, the underlying causes among individuals with MCUS were similar to those seen in the general population. Additionally, we found no cases of isolated hypercalcemia in multiple myeloma. Among the most important strengths of our study is that the cohort is sampled from the most uh, for the from the only cohort screened nationwide for MCUS and is an active follow up. This decreases the risk of selection bias during the conduction of the study. There are also some limitations to the study. It is retrospective and based on the diagnostics of working practitioners, in, and in a quite a few cases, the cause of hypercalcemia was undiagnosed. However, because the ISWMM aims to capture all multiple myeloma cases, it is highly unlikely that any of the undiagnosed cases were caused by the disease. So, based on these results, we conclude that hypercalcemia, particularly isolated hypercalcemia, is not a strong indicator of MCUS progression and is most often caused by other underlying diseases. Thus, in the absence 
of all the crab features, hypercalcemia in MCUS should be approached in the same way as in patients without MCUS. First, measurements of serum calcium should be repeated to confirm that the hypercalcemia is persistent, and then hyperparathyroidism should be ruled out before undertaking further assessments for possible malignancies, including multiple myeloma. And we believe that these findings will contribute to a more evidence and value-based approach to the care of individuals with MGUS. So thank you for listening. Uh, are there any questions? <laughs>